I'm hopping on here for a quick bit to update everyone about my life. So I had a surgery done recently. I'm not too sure if you think it's a serious one or it doesn't look as serious because I can still move my arm and my elbow. So what happened? <laughs> It's like, I, I always laugh when I think about it because it's so ridiculous. I didn't fracture my arm or anything, but I got scratched by a cat or more specifically, I got clawed by a cat. So here's a PSA and I'm making this video to give a warning to people who like cats just as much as I do or even more. Like if you're out seeing all the stray cats or even the neighborhood cats, you know, your neighbors are feeding be careful of them because probably they haven't gone through the training or whatever as normal house pets would in terms of not scratching you when they feel irritable. And for cats, I would say they are unpredictable in terms of their mood. So I was dealing with my regular cat that I always sayang in the neighborhood. Like I always stroke it. And then that particular day, it was out downstairs probably taking a dump and then I called its name and it came over but it looked a little bit different. I'm not too sure it's, if it's because I don't see it regularly now that I've moved out. So when I approached it, I mean it approached me because I called its name and then I sayang and then it looked a little bit tense. The whole body language is a little bit tense and irritable, which should have been the first red flag for me, right? But I decided to just continue sayanging it. I did it for a little bit only before it turned around and clawed me. And that was it. I started bleeding. It was quite a deep wound, like for one of it, one part of it. And another one was was quite deep as well, but not as deep as the other one. So I was bleeding, right? And then I immediately, so the thing to do is to immediately wash it with soap and water. So I did that quickly. I, ran, I kind of went back home to clean it. And then I went to A&E because it was quite late already. So I went to A&E and then got antibiotics. And also they did some cleaning in the hospital and... I think that was it. Then they got me. They, they sent me home. But of course, there was a bit of waiting given that it's Singapore Public Hospital. So that was the first experience. And then I'm, I'm literally not scripting this. I'm sharing as I... I'm speaking as I'm sharing. I'm thinking as I'm sharing. <laughs> I kind of, I'm, not, I'm not planning to edit this video, okay? It's just really like a PSA and an update to my life. Okay, my phone died earlier. So let me continue right now. So... After I was sent home, a few days later, I had to go back to a polyclinic or a GP to follow up and check on the wound and lo and behold, there was pus. So that means it was infected and I had to be sent back to the hospital to undergo something called debridement surgery. It's not a major operation but still a surgery nonetheless. I was on GA and that means I was put to sleep. The experience was quite pleasant, actually, even though there might be complications like heart attack and stroke that I was warned about before the procedure. But I felt like I took a very good nap. I even had a dream. <laughs> I don't even remember. So they put a breathing tube inside me. I'm not too sure whether I get all the details correct, but basically there's a tube inside me to facilitate breathing, I suppose. So they, as they were taking it out, then I was waking up from the procedure Prior to the surgery, I was, I mean, doctors came to me to ask me whether or not I would like to proceed with the surgery. And they told me the consequences if I were to not proceed, like if the infection gets worse, then there might be a need for such a surgery further down the road. But a bigger portion of my arm would be, would have to be cut away or removed in terms of the infected tissues. And even to the extent of if the infection is serious, then amputation and everything. So it's a very real risk. And after weighing the pros and cons and getting super damn nervous, I decided to proceed. I was back in the hospital after the GP appointment. And then I went back to the hospital that evening. And I was in the hospital waiting area on, on a bed waiting until that morning. So I had a, a little bit of a fasting thing because I had to fast prior to the surgery. And then the entire night, the whole place, because it's not 
a ward, it's an observation or rather a waiting area. So it was brightly lit the entire time and it was very hard to fall asleep. Asleep. <laughs> it was very hard to fall asleep. I managed to sleep in the morning because I was damn tired. Yeah, and also uh, I was on drip like uh, through this little... I'm not too sure if you can see it now. It's a bit... It's healing already. So they inserted this plastic needle thing, I think. I, I think it's probably through a metal needle and then they had the plastic thing there. I'm not too sure because I was trying not to look the whole time. But it was uncomfortable. At first, it, was, it didn't feel like there was anything. But soon it became uncomfortable. And I really just wanted to get out of the hospital. Like, being in the hospital is not... It's not nice. That's why I realized relatives or people around me when they are hospitalized, they always say they want to get out. And I understand what they mean right now. Like because every few hours, I mean the nurses came over to check my blood pressure, you know, uh whatever medicine things I have to be given in terms of antibiotics through the drip. And it was my first experience being on drip as well. So I was a little bit excited at the beginning, but then soon I just felt <laughs> I just want the needle thing out of my the plastic thing out of my of my wrist. I thought that I would be getting the the ward thing very quickly, but yeah, it's really hours of waiting. So when they say public hospitals and waiting and everything, it's a very real problem. You don't re exactly get a ward to properly rest in, and basically I didn't shower as well. But but before I went to the hospital, I was already aware that I might be hospitalized and so I already took like a rinse before going there. So luckily I was prepared. I feel like I might post this only after I fully recover because I know my parents will be watching this and I really don't want them to see the wounds that I have and then them to panic or to feel like heart pain. Because when my mom knew I was hospitalized, she was crying so I'm sure that it would affect her a lot if she saw the wounds. So fast forward to back after the surgery, I woke up, I started eating because I could eat already and I was really like, I think I fasted for more than 10, 12 hours already at that point. And after the surgery, I requested to be discharged because I felt okay and I was on painkillers as well. I asked the nurse, okay, whether I could speak to the doctor, whether I could be discharged that day because I understood this is considered a minor procedure to them. Uh, considered, I mean, if you compare it to bigger operations like really cutting open your internal organs and everything, right? So the nurse got the doctor, doctor saw me, he said, okay, yeah, looks like I'm feeling good. I could do like this, I could do this. They got me to do all these hand gestures thing to make sure that I, I guess my hand is not, you know, in some kind of, like, I, I have no idea, honestly. Basically, to make sure that my hand was functioning, I guess, before I was discharged. I could choose an LA instead of a GA, right? But the, the doctor was recommending a GA because it's near the joint is one. And also because if they do a local one, they would have to inject, I think, in this area for... I think it's called a regional one. It's not a local one. Yeah. Where the whole arm would be numb for eight hours, according to the doctor. And the surgery is going to be like 30 minutes to under an hour. So for me to have the arm not move or numb for eight hours and I can't move it, I think it's not ideal. And so they recommended GA where I would conk out and I decided, okay, I mean, it's fine to proceed with that since I it's my first surgery and I would be really freaking out. I was already very anxious right before. I was like needing to go to the toilet. I was feeling nauseous and <laughs> overall I was not in a good state. But at the same time, there was a bit of excitement. It's a one-time thing. Like, I wouldn't want to have it ever again. I would never want to go back into the hospital again. I would never want to go through surgery again. But ultimately, it's an experience. It's, it's something or an experience I can learn from. What happened after surgery? So the next day, I, I was discharged that very same day. And then the next day, I had to come back. Even though it, I was scheduled for follow-up a few days later. But my bandage was soaked with blood. It was not like dripping or anything, but it stained my sheets. So it was scary to me because I was like, oh my god, what's going on? Uh, is it supposed to be bleeding this much? 
and I felt very woozy, like I, I felt like vomiting. But then I calmed myself down, I meditated, and then I contacted the hospital and they told me to come down for follow-up that very day, the very same day. And when the nurses removed the bandage, the doctor said it was normal. And it was like a, uh, like having menses, heavy flow on my arm. And when they unwrapped it, I saw two holes in my arm, which was quite scary. It was like two eye holes because it's quite deep. And doctor says that it will heal from the bottom up. They cleaned it, they rebandaged it, and I had to follow up again two days later. And I was told to continue my antibiotics, painkillers, whatever. And prior to going back for follow-ups, I would have to take painkillers as in if I'm afraid of the pain lah. So <laughs> I was, and so definitely I would take it. Now it's a few follow-ups later, one with the GP as well, who helped me with this new new wound cha dressing change. They will cut small strips and then they will stuff it into the two hole eye holes on my arm. And they were, and that's for, I think it's what they call moist dressing. <sighs> Please pardon me if I get all the medical stuff wrong but it's really just to share my experience if you ever have a, p a point in your life where you have to go through debridement or any form of surgery or hospitalization so they stuff it in the holes uh, which will help it to heal because apparently the t new tissues will push out that strip i mean i have to change it every few days so but it will help to push out it wouldn't uh impede on the process of healing that's according to the nurse yeah and so i i did that and then there was pus and some blood just now that soaked the the strips so i'm not too sure whether things are going okay because the gp said i'm not entirely out of the words it seems okay it's healing but you know you never know infections and all that so please pray for me or whatever or chant for me and my religion is chanting it's Buddhi buddhism right that's the situation right now, so be careful with cats, be careful with animals in general because you never know what bacteria or whatever they carry. And have a great day. I hope you're having a better time than me right now. Yeah, but anyway, oh yeah, I also got like essence of chicken, essence of fish and all that which will help wound healing. So that's something that I've been actively doing, having more rest and actively taking care of my body. I can't exercise at this point or sweat because that would be, you know, like the best breeding ground for bacteria and everything. So so I've been just chilling a little bit more. I hope this is a good PSA for you guys and it's best to and, and the smartest decision to learn from other people's mistakes rather than experience it on your own. I know that the wound healing process is not linear, but yesterday was quite painful for me as well and uncomfortable. Yeah, that's just been the situation and that's all from me. I hope everything goes well and I would heal in no time. Take care.